Hi, I'm Andre, and in this video I'll be giving you a walkthrough of the uh, electronics so far on the uh, Uncollapsible project. Okay, so if you remember from last time, our starting point is the sensors, which are attached to the Malon. So let's look at that. Okay, so a quick recap about the sensors. Uh, we have Malons on the paraglider, so when we pull on it, they stretch, and as they stretch, the strain gauge that is attached to there, uh, the resistance of that strain gauge varies. And on this side, so we can take the two pins that are attached to that strain gauge and measure the resistance. That's the idea. Okay, so for the heart of this project, I've decided to go for an Arduino. I'm not an electronic specialist by any means, so take all I say with a pinch of salt. But basically, an Arduino is a way to easily interface with the microcontroller. They give you all the terminals and some common functions that you might want to do. And also, they're very cheap and the programming environment and language is, is quite simple to learn. Uh, and there's a very big community, so if you want to do some projects, the probability is that someone is out there that has done it already. So we can think of this as kind of the brain of the whole thing. This is what's going to be receiving signals, processing it and doing stuff with it. Uh, and we can connect it to the computer, but we can also power it on its own out in the field. So that's kind of the brains of it. We can't really uh, connect this directly to, I mean we could, but we can't really connect this directly because the difference in resistance that we have to measure is very, very small. So we need something else between these two things. So to make that connection, I've gone for a HX711, which is basically a analog to digital converter. This one is already installed in a PCB, but I'll get another one and show you what that looks like. So this is another development board that I'm using that has the analog to digital converters facing up. So that might help over here. So you can pretty much forget everything else around it. I'm just talking about this green board. All it is is that HX711 chip. And on this side, you have the uh, inputs and outputs from the Arduino. And on this other side, you can connect the strain gauge. So here we have six different pins. So we again, it's not a case of simply connecting our strain gauge straight into this. We have to do something else called a Wheatstone bridge. And the Wheatstone bridge is so that this thing has an easier time measuring a very small resistance, or in this case, a very small drop in voltage because of that resistance. So a Wheatstone bridge is something quite simple. So this we can connect to our analog to digital converter. Um, it's basically a rosette of resistances where there's four resistances that are all the same. In this case, all of these resistances are the same resistance as my strain gauge at rest. So if you stretch the strain gauge, this resistance will change and these will stay roughly the same. So the analog to digital converter can input a voltage into here and out of here and measure uh, the difference in these two points because of that resistance change. This difference will be amplified and much easier to read. So here I've made uh, four of them. But if we, uh, if we zoom in here and you kind of forget about all this stuff over here, if you see there, one, two, three resistors, there's the uh, E plus minus and A plus minus, and that there, that blue, is the terminal that we can connect our straight gauge into. And here I've done four of them so that I can use in future projects maybe more than one channel. So, 
Now this thing here doesn't look so daunting anymore. So all this is is a way to easily interface with that. But basically is one analog to digital converter. Uh, Wheatstone Bridge is inside there. I don't know if you can see it. It's, it was the first one I've made. And here we have the uh, two terminals, one for each load cell. So we can plug this into here. And then this is uh, a way to easily interface with the Arduino. Also have a button so I can use stuff with that button. And this will plug into here. And that's it. So now if I use this port to connect this to, to the computer, then I can actually measure the uh, resistance on there. And when this moves, I can print it to the computer and see what, it, what is going on. However, the, um, the Arduino has some internal flash but uh, it doesn't it can't you can't really use it to store your own information so for that i've got a data logger unit and the way this thing works is is quite simple it has a slot here for an sd card so i can tell the arduino to store information here and it has a real time clock with uh, with its own battery and crystal which means that the Arduino can know uh, what time it is in real life. So what I can do is do a big sandwich of different components that add different functionality to the, uh, to the Arduino. Okay, so now will be the right time to put a sweet little uh, montage of how I've made some of these things and then we'll plug this into the computer and see what we're getting out of it. So all I need to do now is write some code. All right, that's done. Joking aside though, it really did take a really long time to figure that out. Let's connect it and see how it works. This goes here. So now we can uh, get a known weight and put it on the scale and see, see the results live. And obviously it's, um, all that data is getting recorded to the data logger as well. Um, it records to the data logger even faster than what it says on the screen. So you can put some more weight on. And uh, yeah, it's quite interesting how it works. You can switch this to a can switch this to a graph. Okay, so we've got a graph there. We're uh, nicely on zero. If we put known weight, <clears throat> roughly a kilo. You see that we get a nice step there. We we'll put another one on. Another step, roughly of the same size. And if we take both of them off, we get back to zero. This might look like quite obvious. That's how a scale works, but 
you'd be amazed at the amount of time and effort that it took both with the hardware because it's non-standard you know the melons and stuff and with the software to get it to do this and you'll notice that there's some waving in it that looks like some kind of noise but it's a mechanical noise it's this <laughs> it's this thing swinging so it's quite sensitive if you put a little bit of swing in it it records it so you'd think the tension on the lines is uh, always the same but it isn't when something swings it goes through more and less than what it actually weighs so it's quite quite interesting to see I've, I have a, lot of, a couple of other projects in mind that could use this that is nothing related to a paraglider so it's quite cool to uh, learn all these things so anyway so one problem that took uh, a bit of time to figure out was that the melons to have this kind of response the melons have to be kept in an open position uh, in order for this to have this nice linear response if the gate is closed all kinds of weird things happen in here which means that the stress on where the strain gauge is um, really gets all over the place when you put two kilos on the stress goes up and then you put another two kilos on and it goes down and it has to do with how the threads interact on how what stress this side sees so one outcome of that is that I'm gonna to have to design better sensors in a future episode because I can't be uh, flying around with open melons. So that's it. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is build a box for this thing and some better connections so I can do some initial testing, maybe on a kite or something like that. And then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Bye.